Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. Today is mail call. Got a whole heap of stuff arrived. It's going to take me ages to get through it. So this is just going to be a long video of me opening the stuff that I recently got from Amazon and AliExpress. AliExpress was having a sale and I bought a bunch of like equipment and tools and uh, components and such. So we'll be having a look at that. Um, I won't show you bag by bag. What I'll do is I'll flip you over to the uh, lab cam and I'll show you the whole room and you'll see the bags of stuff that I've got. Uh, and then we'll just pop over to the bench and we'll start having a look at it all. So let's do it. Well, here we are in the room, um, but you can't really see down there, can you? I've got bags of stuff. This bag, this bag, this bag. I got two big boxes like this from Amazon. I got something from Jayco. I've got uh, some books from Amazon. And then I've got this stuff that you can see on the table here. So that's a lot of stuff that we've got to get through. Um, anyway, let's do it one bit at a time. Here we are on the bench. So I figured we might as well just have a look at our equipment from uh, from Jcar. Um, I got this yesterday. Um, uh, it's uh, a piece of equipment I need for the second mini project, um, which which we'll be doing soon. It's uh, it's part of their Duino Tech line, which is their um, uh, Arduino compatible uh, doodads. Uh, this is an LED. It's a 40 RGB LED matrix shield uh, compatible with Uno and Mega. So um, this is JMP002, the second JCAR mini project from Silicon Chip. So I needed this for that project. I'm going to be making that video soon. So that's what that is from JCAR. Everything else is from either Amazon or... AliExpress. So let's have a look at what we got from Amazon first and then we'll finish up with what we got from AliExpress. <clears throat> so our first book, uh, yes, so this is um, USB embedded hosts. It's about um, how to work with uh, USB from microcontrollers I believe by Jan Axelson, who I've recently discovered. I bought four of her books. This is one of them. Uh, I'm learning about USB. I want to know about how to implement it. <coughs> and then implement it on the device side, rather, than, 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 the, uh, than the computer side. Uh, and these are, again, just more of my uh, USB books from uh, Jan Axelson. So this is our uh, one, two, three. So we've got um, USB embedded hosts, USB mass storage, and then the serial port. This is about like UARTs, I guess. Um, and the the uh, the main game hasn't arrived yet. There's another book coming. Uh, it's called uh, USB Complete or something like that, I think. Uh, it's the fifth edition, if I recall correctly. Anyway, that uh, that does us for our... Um, our uh, our books from Amazon. I'm going to throw you back over to the room cam, and let's see um, what's in here. Now this is. Um, a set of uh, drawers. It's uh, four drawers. They come from a German company called Rosler, I think. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce the name of the company. Um, and the estimate I had on these arriving from uh, Amazon was that they weren't going to arrive until next year. So they got here a lot sooner than I thought they would. Now, can I show you how these work? They're basically just a set of drawers, so you can take the drawer out, and uh, and there it is. And there's uh, one, two, three, four of them. So uh, these are really excellent because the drawers just pop right out, which is what you want. It 
basically the drawer turns into a tray and you can take it over to your bench and work with it and then when you're done you can just put it away. This stuff is made out of cardboard but it's well finished um, and uh, it's got little metal uh, 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 drawer handles and um, I, I find them super super convenient. They're expensive but they're excellent so um, uh, yeah I've got two of them uh, here this one and also um, this one. Uh, have I got uh, so um, so that, that that does this for everything from Amazon and this is just a, a second set of those drawers. Oh they seem to be a little bit uh, a bit damaged. They've got scuff marks on them on the front. It's just aesthetics though. It doesn't, it doesn't bear on their uh, practicality. So again, just another set of, uh, of drawers from Rosler. So very happy to have those. Now that concludes uh, the stuff that we have from uh, Amazon. So now we can get on with the stuff uh, from AliExpress. But before we do, I'm going to just stuck out uh, for a second. Man, I had to duck away for a bit, but I'm back and I'm ready to go. So uh, I thought we might do this first. This is a, a whole bunch of USB uh, C cables that I got uh, recently. And I, uh, I don't know if you saw my previous video, I did say that uh, if you want to get USB C cables, um, in my experience so far, uh, the best place to do it is AliExpress. So I tried to get some uh, some USB uh, cables on Amazon recently, and they cost a fortune. And then when they turned up, they weren't uh, USB three cables; they were USB two cables. So uh, these are USB three point two cables. So they can do up to twenty gig, eight K. So uh, I I got a whole bunch of them. Uh, I've got a new uh, drawer as well now uh, for my um, Type C cables. Uh, I don't know if I can show you. Oh yeah, I can. All right, hang on a sec. Here we go. <laughs> this drawer down here. That's my new USB C drawer. So that's where all of these cables that we're looking at here on the bench uh, will go to live. Um, so I might as well just throw those in there now. Uh, as you can see, I got uh, three three meter ones, and I got 1.5 meter, one meter, 1.5 meter, one meter, 1.5 meter, one meter. So there we go. So I got three one meters, three 1.5 meters, and three three meters. So those all fit in there. Now these are just adapters, so uh, I don't see any reason to keep them in their bags. Uh, these are all the same. They, these are joiners, it says, uh, support cables that can do up to um, 40 gigabits, USB 4. I think that, that that's also called Thunderbolt. Don't quote me because I don't know. Um, but this, these, um, these USB Type C uh, extension uh, thingies, um, they're for uh, USB 4. So there, there's pretty much no Type C cable uh, that they won't be able to join. <sighs> so uh, that's good. Now I have. Uh, <sighs> I have this container here, um, which includes all my various um, USB adapters and things. So that's where these will go to live. And uh, we might as well do this next. This is a drawer full of one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten Arduinos. And what kind of Arduinos are these? Let's pop the thing and find out. I um I got ten lots of three different kinds of Arduino boards um, because I'm planning to start doing a lot of those projects. These are Leonardo's and I figure if I'm going to be doing a lot of projects um, if I want to keep the project then I have to dedicate the board don't I? So uh, yeah um, that's a, a USB uh, micro there for these Arduino Leonardo boards so this is going to be the Arduino Leonardo um, uh, thing. And I've got another Leonardo board here. Uh, so that can go in there. Um, keep that in there as well. <sighs> Might as well chuck my little... Uh, I don't know what do you call those things. I forget what you call them. Okay, so I've got a bunch of nanos here in the front. Uh, I didn't get a whole heap of nanos. I did get a whole heap of Leonardo's. So uh, that does that. Now, what will we do next? We might as well. Oh, what are we going to do? Yeah, let's do this. Now, I believe that these are my Arduino Megas. And we'll just see about that. So, uh, in addition to getting a whole bunch of uh, Leonardo's, I also got a whole bunch of Megas. And this is them. There's 10 of them. Now, I've got a tray here, so we should be able to just put all of those in there. Now, let's open one up so we can just confirm what we're dealing with. I'm actually going to keep these bags. This is a perfectly good bag. It can go in the bag bag. Um, I might just get a little bit of uh, isopropyl to get the... Uh, <clears throat> that writing off the bag. Look at that. It just vanishes. Now, um, put that bag away later. This is a Mega 2560 and it uses a USB Type B. So that's a bit different, um, but that's fine. So these are, are, are 10 Mega boards, so that's good to have. I suppose we might as well look in here next. What have we got? So, this magnetic screw pad. Ah, yes. Okay. Fair enough. So, I wasn't quite sure if I really wanted to get one of these, um, but I just hit order anyway. Um, I thought I could keep it um, just here. Now, obviously, I have this little area on the mat for... Uh, screws, um, but it's not magnetic. Um, but this is magnetic. So I'll just pop it out of the thing there. Now, uh, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure what the point of that uh, that diagram is there. I don't know. I don't know why they do that. Uh, but this is a screw pad, and it can live there, and it should be uh, magnetic. So that's what I thought I'd do with that. Now, um, let's keep on keeping on and seeing what else is in this bag. This is a whole bunch of miscellaneous bits and pieces, I think. So we'll find out. That's some sort of a kit. So uh, what have we got in here? Uh, some sort of a, um, a light show, something or other. Fair enough. Um, I'll put that uh, 
Uh, I'll just put it over here for now. We'll come back to the kits later on. So, uh, I'm not sure what's in here. Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Do you think I should do an unboxing video for that? It's, a, it's an Anang um, battery tester. I thought it looked pretty good. I don't think I'll do a standalone unboxing for it though. It's a pretty simple bit of gear. I'll uh, of course put a link to this um, in the show notes for this video. So uh, yeah, Ripper. This is the Anang battery tester. And this is what it looks like. So you can test uh, I've never seen a 3.7 volt that's that size, I don't know. Ah, cool. <laughs> it says good thing. That's very good. Alright, cool. Might keep that on the bench. We'll see. Now I've got a bunch of speakers. These are just little um, 8 ohm jobbies. Uh, and I thought I'd keep them all together in a in a dedicated um, box. So uh, let's do that. Should be able to. Um, remarkable how small they are. I, uh, I, I picked them uh, the sizes of them so that I'd have an assortment of sizes um, but I also picked them so they'd be uh, small enough to fit into my um, drawer. Let's, I'm gonna just uh, cut this off here. I, uh, I like to keep the, uh, the labels in the drawers with the equipment if I can. And here I can, so I will. I'll uh, get a drawer. So there's a drawer. We can put the various speakers in. Um, uh, before we put the speakers in, let's put the uh, let's put the labels in the bottom oy, oy, oy. Be careful! I don't cut the uh, the speaker wire. So just just sorting some. Uh, actually, I'm just gonna uh, stop, and I'll come back once I've finished sorting these. Actually, you know, I was thinking. Uh, what I've got to do is um, time lapse uh, boring bits. So what I'm going to do is time lapse this boring bit. All right, so that's uh, two, four, six um, small little uh, speakers with these uh, little connectors on the end, some sort of JST connector, I expect. So uh, these should all fit uh, in my drawer. as they do. So I've got a drawer with six speakers in it now. I'll file that for later on. Now we continue. Not sure what all these little things are. This is, uh, oh they're OLED display modules. That's cool. Very cool. So uh, looks like they'll fit in a drawer. 
Here's the drawer. Now, um, just going to uh, cut the bag open and try and uh, Okay. Yeah, that's a little OLED module for a uh, 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 for a uh, well, I guess anything. For it's probably uh, 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 yeah, IIC I2C. So it's a I2C uh, compatible uh, OLED module. I have some experience with these. Um, I don't know if that they all use the same protocol or or how they all work, but uh, I have had luck making them work before so uh, hopefully I'm able to um, do the same thing again in the future so it's going to keep the label in there let's see if I can find the rest of them there's there's another one uh, oh, okay it says on the thing what color Is it going to tell me what color? I'm not sure. Not sure, not sure. Uh, this one is blue. Yeah, I don't think it matters. I'll be able to figure it out. Uh, let's put blue in the front. Did it say? It did say blue. There we go. So they're both blue. That's good. So we'll put the blue ones in the front. Just going to uh, chop this off here. And you can see that says blue as well. Blue, blue, blue. So we've got two blues. Hippa. One and two. Now, not sure what this is. It says it's just got an address on it, doesn't say what it is. Uh, 0.91 white. Okay. Let's go get my rubbish bin and keep that. Here. Get rid of all this. Now, what's in this bag? This video is going to take ages. I've got so much stuff to go through. Alright, this is white. There you go. Look at that. So it's just a tiny little... Uh, OLED uh, device version 1.6 0 0.91 OLED okay well um, I guess I'll just uh, put the label in the thing and put the thing in the thing that ought to do it there's the thing all right Now, is there another one? Usually, I uh, usually I buy them in pairs. Here's another one. This has got the same address on it.
This is white as well. So, uh, very good. And does it have the measure? It does, 0 0.91. I believe that's 0 0.91 inches. There we go. All right. I have to label those uh, at some point. Now, what's in here? This is a 88 to 108 megahertz DIY kit FM radio. So here's another kit. Very good. I'll put it there with my kits. So it's a kit radio. And this is a pure sine wave inverter. Okay, so it's another electronics kit. Put them over there. This is another one of those uh, displays from earlier. And is it white? It's blue. Okay, so. <sighs> I am going to make a label and I'm going to call it uh, 0 0.91 inch um, OLED. There we go. Print, print. And then uh, I'm going to print, uh, we've got white and blue. So, uh, this is white, uh, white, I'm going to print two copies of white because we've got the different sizes. Okay, that's white and we're going to do blue. <coughs> uh, blue and we'll do two of these as well <coughs> so we might as well put uh, well we'll put uh, white up the front and, uh, and and blue up the back is that what we'll do why not so is that gonna fit just barely so uh, let's just take a bit off there bit off there, bit off there, bit off there. All right. I'm going to uh, time lap time lapse this as well. All right. So that's my. Uh, my OLEDs, very good. You can file those. Now, let's hit this one. It says uh, some sort of a kit. I'm not sure if I got two of those. It seems to be similar to the other one that I got. So uh, anyway, I'll chop off the label and we'll keep it together. Now, normally when I get an electronics kit to do, I, uh, I keep it in a box like this. So that's uh, it's one electronics kit to do. And I'll uh, file that. Very good. All right, now what's in here? Similar, some sort of little uh, DIY heart-shaped green LED. So we'll do that as well. That's an electronics kit. File him, we'll do that one day just for fun. Bit of soldering practice. Now what is this? Uh, eight. AHT10 high precision digital temperature and humidity sensor. 
Interesting. Temperature and humidity sensor. And this, this is another one of our LCDs from earlier. So we'll, uh, this is blue. All right. Alright, so this is our uh, temperature sensor. I'm just going to leave that there for now. I'll figure out what to do with that later on. This is a box full of potentiometers. Now, I'm not sure if they're... Uh, yes, I believe they're all 50K. I'm not sure. So what are we dealing with? Uh, WL 50K. 50k, so it's a it's a box of 50k um, potentiometers. I'm just going to cut the label out. Now, um, I've got potentiometers. I've got 1K, 10K, 100K, and 1 meg. So uh, these, now can we pick this up magnetically? We can, that's going to be very convenient. Now, there we go. So we're going to call that uh, 50K potentiometer. go, on we go, uh, clear, and we're going to make this 50k uh, potentiometer, potentiometer, so we'll just print ourselves a label for that, um, and these will go happily uh, in between my two two drawers of potentiometers that I've already got. Let's put that sign on there. That wants to go back. Almost there. So you can see my 50k potentiometer drawer. Very good. What's next? Let's have a look in here. Now those are obviously uh, banana, 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 banana. All right. So I obviously got three three packs of these. Now where will they go? I think they will go in here. They're not quite the same, but they're pretty similar. I'm not sure what these hook clips are doing in here. Ah, fascinating. I don't think those should be in here. These hook clips um, will be... Oh, look, there's all sorts of hook clips. Uh, it does say banana jumper and hook clip. Okay. Fine, the hook clips can, can, can stay. I, uh, I didn't know they were here, but now I do, so that's good. Um, the reason I mention it, by the way, is I've got this whole other drawer here. 
which has um, banana hook clips. So these have got hook clips on one end with the banana plug on the other end, whereas the hook clips in here are just free freestanding. So and there's not much room in here anyway. So um, there's there's no point uh, changing that at the moment. So uh, it's going to put our bits and pieces in the drawer. And uh, once the clips are all out of the bag, I'm going to cut off the labels and put the labels in the back. You know what I really need is some like uh, DC barrels to uh, <coughs> to banana plugs, and also DC barrels to uh, alligator clips. So that's probably a, um, an electronics project to do on the main channel. Making some cables. One of our favorite things to do here on In the Lab with JJ. Now, that's everything for the banana plugs to jumpers. Very good. I'm just going to empty that bin. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll get that away. Now, what are the specs on these guys? 24 AWG. All right, are they all 24s? Uh, this 24. 24 24 24 24 24 24 24 24 24 24 and 24 easy peasy now These are, I can leave that uh, in the back there. Um, all right, so I'm going to call these um, 24 um, AWG uh, 7.8 centimeter jumper. Okay. <clears throat> so that's a, a 24 AWG 7.8 centimeter jumper. Very good. Let's uh, chop that off there and uh, pop that off there. I'm going to time lapse this as well. All right, so that's a bag or a box full of uh, jumper leads. I might never run out. Put that away. Uh, what's going on here? Now here's some easy ones. These are just some uh, some red and black banana plugs. Very happy to add those to my collection. <clears throat> I'm not sure what this material is. I, I assume it's silicon. I'm not sure, 
but I really like it. It's like high quality material. You can just kind of tell that it's high quality. So there's our there's our reds. Now file them. Uh, And then we're going to do the blacks as well. So, start, take them out. All right, on we go. Now, looks like we've got a few more uh, Arduinos. Ah, this is a USB host shield, uh, USB host shield, USB host shield. Ah, oh, cool, this is a, a data cable detection board, so it's, I'll show you that in a second, that's really great, I'm looking forward to having that. Okay, this is a 3.5 inch uh, TFT, wow. Did I just get one of those? I'm not sure. Uh, voltage regulator module. Okay. Uh, this is some sort of a kit. Uh, electronic hourglass. All right. So that's another kit. We'll put it in the, in the kit box. Now, what's this? Oh, I saw that already. Oh no, it's another one of the same. It's another 3.5 inch TFT. This looks some sort of experimenty thing. Uh, a mini Tesla coil. There you go. So that's another. Uh, that's another kit. There's our kit. Man, I've got a lot of kits to do. It's a good problem to have. Now here's one of our white OLEDs. So we saw these earlier. This is one of the 1.3 inch OLEDs. So, uh, as we uh, sort of imagined, we'd get this uh, this white one. So that's what we've got. Great. Um, let me just uh, get this out of its packet carefully. Don't want to damage it. All right. Uh, and let's just put its uh, vital statistics in the in the bottom here. I'm gonna chop that off. <sighs> this is just a reminder that it's white. We're not likely to forget. Now. I believe that these will be Unos, probably. Arduino Unos. Uh, a bit of trouble figuring out how to get this off, but uh, we won't be needing it, so we can cut it. Same for these guys. Uh, chop this open up around there. <sighs> so. Yep, these are Unos and they're USB Type B 
as well, like the uh, the Megas that we had earlier. Very good. Now I've got more Unos. This is a box full of Unos. Oh, this is Ethernet Shield. Okay. Fair enough. So uh, these are Unos. And they're uh, they're with type type B as well. Uno, Uno, Uno. Uno's everywhere. So I'll put all of my Uno's in this box here. That's my new Uno box. And we freed up something in the back here, which is good because we've got all of these, which are. Uh, uh, USB host shields. So what we're going to do um, is uh, file these. <clears throat> Again, this is a good opportunity for uh, time lapse or whatever. So uh, I'm going to fast forward this slide. Hang on a sec. All right, well, that's done. Now these are, are two... Um, 3.5 inch uh, touch screens. I'm just going to leave these up the back here. I'll think about what I'm going to do with them. Uh, yes, now I'm really looking forward to having this particular piece of equipment. Um, let me just cut it out of its thing. This is a USB cable tester. Um, I don't know how it works. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Power in. So over here is you power the board with a, a USB type C. And then uh, it looks like you can uh, I don't know how you test the bits and pieces. <clears throat> Shall we try? Why not, huh? Uh, so, um, what are we going to do? We need a um, type A to type C power. Here's a type A to type C for power. Um, it's labelled MBD camera. I'm going to cut that off. Here's my snippy bits. So uh, take that off. And, take this off as well. And I'll just chop off these. They're old. This used to connect my NBD camera which honestly was such a, a rort. It, it was one of those uh, cameras that told you, advertised itself as a 4K camera and isn't a 4K camera. Just, it was just a lie. And I bought it on Amazon where you'd hope you'd be protected from that kind of fraudulent kind of a sale. But uh, anyway, NBD camera. It's uh, not a very good piece of equipment. Now let's see if we can get that in there. We can. And then we can power up this guy using this. Now when the power's on, uh, it doesn't seem to light up or anything. So I'm not sure what to expect there. Now I've got a USB cable over here plugged into an Uno. Not sure what I'm doing with this Uno. And of course, this is a type B cable, which this doesn't support. How annoying. All right. Well, if we're going to need something else, how about, uh, how about this? This is a lightning. I think it did have support for lightning. Let's plug it in and see what happens. There we go. Just, it's got a light here for VCC. 
data minus, data plus. Yeah, I'm not sure really what to expect. Just showing the thing. So I don't know how to use this, obviously. I thought it would be more, um, I guess, self-descriptive than it is. I'll see if I can find a manual or something to help me uh, understand it. What have I done here? Knock my power out. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna take a closer look at this in a in the future. A couple of these uh, static bags left over. Just gonna uh, disappear for a minute. I'll be back. All right, on we go. Um, I just filed that uh, USB cable tester. I did figure out how it works. Basically, you power it, and then you use either the Type-A and the Type-C cable, and you loop it around, and you can test the uh, Lightning, Type-C, and micro attachments on the other end. So that's uh, fair enough. I think they call it DT3 because it, it tests basically three types of cables. Uh, it doesn't do Type-A to Type-A, and it doesn't do uh, Type-B in any variety at all. Now this is a kit, so we're going to file him in kits. Got a lot of kits to do, I'm looking forward to doing those. Uh, this is a voltage regulator, it's got uh, some cool, it's got, a, it's got a LED display and everything, so it might be fairly sophisticated. Looking forward to checking that out. Now, Some wires and such in here I think so uh, I got myself some uh, desoldering wick one two three I think it was just the three of them so uh, how are we gonna file that Look at that, I've already got heaps of this stuff. So uh, let's just uh, chop the labels off. <clears throat> now, label can go there. Might as well fast forward this as well. All right, so we've got some wire here. This is uh, I'd like to know what uh, gauge it is. Twenty-four, twenty-four AWG. Excellent. Um. So we've got a bunch of it. There's some more. Is it all 24? Yes, it is. I'll make sure it's all the same. 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 And same. Okay. I'm not sure how I'm going to file this. Uh, give me a second, I'll go find a drawer. Alright, well I found this drawer, so uh, let's time lapse this one, we'll just uh, fill it up. Alright, so there we are with the drawer full of uh, 24 gauge hookup wire. So let's uh, turn this on. Uh, and we're going to call it uh, 24 uh, A, oops, AWG uh, hook hook up uh, wire. Good old hook up wire. All right.
So I'm just going to snip that off. And we're going to put him on there. So uh, we're getting towards the end. It has been a long video. I did order pretty much everything AliExpress was selling. All right. So there's our hookup wire. And on we go. Now this is just sandpaper. Uh, how am I going to... I don't know. I'll just put it in the drawer. What's this? Stainless steel string ruler. String action gauge ruler for guitar bass. There you go. So this is just a little ruler. Fascinating. Not sure where I'm going to keep the uh, the label. It's, uh, it's got a uh, plastic uh, protector over it. I suppose I can take that off. String action ruler for string instruments. There you go. I can't help myself. I see something that measures something and I buy it. There we go. Wow, that's cool. All right, well, I'll just put it in my drawer with my bits and pieces. What's in here? Uh, these are... Um, <laughs> these are just uh, voltage regulators, I think. Let's have a look. Yeah. Yep. So these are uh, IF, IRFZ44N power MOSFETs. Oh, okay, they're power MOSFETs. So uh, I'll file these. I don't know if I reserved a draw for them yet or not. I forget. Um, but I won't take up your time with that. We'll just put them in the corner here and we'll sort that out later on. Uh, also, um, this was our stainless steel ruler thing and I'm just going to stick that label in the uh, in the drawer where I keep the thing. It won't hurt to keep it in there. Alright, get rid of that. What's next? We've got all sorts of little bits and pieces in here. This, oh, it's another one of the host shields from earlier. So I didn't get three. If I didn't get three, I probably got five. But maybe I only got two. Who knows? I don't know. in this guy. Oh, this is one of our uh, 
yeah temperature so we got a couple of those temperature yep okay uh, now these are tools I like tools this is I got two of them they're just uh, for honking um, uh, integrated circuits out of their uh, sockets do you see there you just flip them over there and put them in there and you can lift out uh, things so I got two I've got one for each uh, um, basket live happily ever after over there having some trouble with that light of mine it's a pretty dodgy joint should probably tear it down and fix it ah oh, DNA That's one more drawer done. This is our last drawer of like miscellaneous bits and pieces. So, this is uh, tape. It's monster. Not sure where I will keep this tape. I've, uh, of course, I've got all sorts of tape. I mean, as you do. Here's my tape drawer. So I guess that can live in the tape drawer. And uh, I'll put the little label in there with it. There we go. This tape, by the way, check it out. It's uh, it's it's really thick. Ah, double sided. <clears throat> All right, what are we dealing with here? High temperature resistant aluminium foil tape. Ah, oh, this is more tape. It's from Germany. Wow. Yeah. So it's uh, high temperature foil tape. Fascinating. Not sure where I'm going to keep it. to think about what I'm going to do with that bit of tape. <sighs> now there's all sorts of bits and pieces in here. What's this? This looks like, ah yes, it's our other white uh, 1.3 inch OLED. So we were expecting that. And here it is. So uh, This is our OLED and this is the one we were looking for. So we've got uh, two white ones now. Just uh, snip this off. go and here we go I think I just got uh, one two of each color one blue two blue two white 
Now this is a tool by the looks of it, some sort of a um, <coughs> screwdriver. So uh, it says black set B. There you go, black set B. I don't know if there were other color options. I'm not sure. Now this is some sort of a pen holder for the uh, for the screwdriver bits. There it is. And these are various precision uh, screwdriver bits. Not sure how they slide out. There we go. Look at that. Ah, oh, this must be a uh, pencil. Fascinating. There you go. So those are uh, leads for the pencil. It's not a screwdriver at all. It's a mechanical pencil. Awesome. Let's see if we can get one of these out. Great big honking uh, lead. Oh, it doesn't seem to want to go in there. I want to push it. Oh, there's one in there already. There you go. So we've got spare ones. Wow. This is already my favorite pencil. Look at this. It's a ripper. Check it out. So uh, I have to figure out where to keep these uh, spare uh, leads. Let's find something to draw on. I might just... Uh... Oh, look, there's a, a little pencil sharpener in the back as well. That's neat, isn't it? You can ship that in there and sharpen up your LED pencil. That's awesome. Wow. All right. I like this. Very slick. What a cool pencil. Very cool. Now let's find something to write on. Let's say uh, John was here. There we go. I like that. That's wonderful. Where will I keep my uh, spare uh, LED? Or not LED, spare lead. I'll just put it in thing over here. Yep, that's fine. All right, very good. On we go. What have we got here? Screw extractor. Okay. I don't think I'm passing the intelligence test. How do you get this open? Myself a little screwdriver here and let's try popping that. Yeah. Well, these have all fallen out of their place. But these are for uh, extracting uh, screws. They uh, are they labelled? That's obviously the biggest one, number four. Have we got a number three? Yes, we do. So we might assume three goes next, and then we've got uh, one and zero and two. There is two, and then this is also two, and then we've got a one and a zero. All right. Um, well, this is the screw extractor, six pieces gold. So we'll uh, cut that out. Oh boy. Now I'm just going to uh, get some of my crafty pasty stuff. Let's 
get some of that here. This is just a uh, bow stick, blue stick. It's uh, paste. I'm just going to put some. Oh, I'm just about out of paste. Yeah. Uh, this will be his last paste, I think. Ripper. And I'm just going to stick that in there. He'll be happy there. And then on the top, and this is done, so we're going to throw him away. Uh, I'll keep that just in case I need it one more time for anything today. Otherwise, it's going into the bin. Uh, <clears throat> what I want to do is just turn this guy on. And we'll make this the screw uh, extra. Screw extractor. Um, so then we'll know what we're dealing with. <clears throat> Pop him off there. <sighs> so I'll be able to put this in my little toolbox and I'll know what it is. Wonderful. Might as well put that away now. It's going to take a quick break. I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So I'm going to go through this little box here. This looks like uh, some uh, integrated circuits of some description. What do we got here? LM358. LM358P. All right. Let me see. is my box of LM358's <coughs> high gain amplifier LM358 so uh, ah, what are we going to do ah well, I'm just going to make a, um, uh, label for this high gain amp with fire, and then it's the LM three fifty eight P. Not sure what the prep P indicates. Not sure. Now apparently I've got 50 of these, which is seems like rather a lot. Now I'm just gonna uh, pop them in the uh, in the drawer over there, so uh, I'll be back. All right, so I just took all of those uh, amplifiers and put them in a drawer over in my IC drawer. What do we got here? Safety hooks. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, well, I'll just uh, snip the little label out, and I think that we can give uh, these a home. here 
Now, I'm not sure if these are the same. Not sure. Oop. Before we file that away, let's just see what we're dealing with here. Uh, what do we got? Just a magnetic. Uh, yeah, right. So I think that you just put this on the end of your uh, screwdriver. It's a screwdriver magnet. Yeah, right. Interesting. Have to figure out how to use those. Not sure yet. So, just uh, get that out there. Now, I think we could do with the label. Uh, this is a uh, safe, safe. Hook. Wonderful. So, uh, let's label this. These are my safety hooks. I, uh, I don't know whether you, you noticed, but the way these work is you. You screw them in, and then you can uh, clip clip things on through that that uh, that bit there. So, safety hooks. Fair enough. What do we got? This LM three ninety three P. This is very similar to what we had earlier. Now let's see if I can find LM393. I'll be back. I'm back. So the uh, LM393 is an analog comparator. So uh, let's uh, make ourselves a label. I'm gonna make it uh, analog. Uh, comparator, analog comparator, uh, and then it's going to be LM393P. <clears throat> okay. Now I uh, I I can't bring it over to show you, but I I've got this. Uh, integrated circuits um, sort of thing happening uh, on my shelf over on the corner there and that's where I'm just taking this stuff so I'll put this uh, I'll put this next to uh, this and I've got a spare drawer over there that I'm using ah <sighs> All right, well. I'll just fix this and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So that was the uh, amplifiers and the comparators. They've been filed now, which is good. We're almost at the end. Ah, this is another host shield. So I did indeed get five of these. Five will be pushing it to fit them all into the uh, drawer. See how we go. <sighs> there's our host shields and there's our paperwork. Stick him in the back there. And then that guy Fit in. Is he going to fit in? <sighs> there we 
There we go. That'll fit. <sighs> yes. And what is this? Very difficult to read. Looks like it's already assembled. Robot. 10 star robot. I don't remember this. I don't know what this is. memory of this device. It's got a big honking heat sink on it. Some sort of an amplifier I assume. Volume left, volume right. Ah. Out left, out right. Yeah, it's some sort of uh, uh, amplifier by the looks of it. I'll just uh, I'll file that for uh, later on. I uh, I did want to get uh, an audio amplifier set up here uh, with a couple of those little speakers just for testing. You know, audio projects, I guess you'd have to say. So. Uh, that's the end of that box. Now, uh, just give me a sec, I'll be back. So we're almost done. I thought I'd show you this. This is my uh, sandpaper uh, drawer. I've got some very fine grain uh, sandpaper of, of different grits, but they're all very fine grain grits. Now, this air quality detector I believe is more capable than my other this is the 2C09 I'm not sure what my other one was but I think that this one has more features this is the 9 in one now the other one that I have I believe is the uh, 5 in one so it looks like they have the same form factor though, and that'd be great because then I can just replace them, uh, assuming that it works. So uh, let's power this thing up and see if it uh, if it works. Uh, it doesn't have the same uh, mounting options as my other one. Hmm. 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 All right. Well, I'm not sure where I'll keep it, and I'm not sure which way even it goes. But let's uh, power it up, and we'll see what we can see. Now, the other one I had sort of works, but I have to clamp it. It's a bit weird. Um, the screen doesn't work properly, but if I get one of my clamps and I clamp the screen, like squeeze it, it fixes the problem. So I, it's a bit weird. Uh, but it does uh, it does work when the clamp's on. So. Let's power this guy up and see what it does. Which way is up? Is it going to turn itself on? It says that it's got power. Let's press the power button and see what it does. Nothing. Let's give it a really good long press. <clears throat> is it perhaps not getting enough power? I'm not sure. It's a bit of a mystery. Let's leave it up the back. It might be charging. I don't know. Now this thing came in a great big honking styrofoam box, which seemed a bit overkill to me for what it was. It's just this little guy. Um, and this cost me an absolute arm and a leg. This was really expensive, um, which is silly for the size of it. I think I paid about a hundred bucks for this. Can you believe it? And this is 
uh, SN96.5 AG3 CU0.5. So that's uh, tin, silver, and copper, I believe. Um, so it's basically just an alloy. And I got it um, as a uh, solder, essentially, for my... Solder pot. So this is solder for my solder pot. Um, you don't want uh, stuff that's got flux in it. When, it seems when you're using this. Uh, so I haven't got it all figured out, but now I've got some material for my solder pot. So that's what that is. Alright, where will I keep this? I'm not sure. Hmm. <laughs> I'll just put it out of the way for now. Alright, well, we're almost there. Might as well show you this. This is just a, um, a, a, a microfiber um, brush. Just a... Just a brush. Very nice microfiber. So I'll have to find somewhere to hang it. <clears throat> Where will it live? Over there. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be good. I'll uh, I'll sort that out later. We don't need to do that now. I'll take a souvenir from the. Uh, Packaging. All right. Well, we're almost done. Just a couple of things to go. This is Wave Share, and these are two point eight touch screens. For the uh, for the Arduino, of course. Cool. So we've got uh, a whole box of them. We've got three. So uh, those are the uh, two point eight inch. And then these are the 3.5 inch. So I'll uh, get somewhere to keep those. We're almost there. What is this? Digital stereo amplifier. There you go. I did mention about the amplifier earlier. So. Uh, there you go. Well, we're almost there. It's going to cut this label off. We won't be needing that. All right. Well, this is another kit, so we'll put him in now kit box documentation all right and uh, this is our very last thing and I saved this to the end because I thought it looked kind of cool it's basically a Game Boy um, and of course like in 1991 a Game Boy was like high tech, but these days they're just silly. So uh, you can get them from China for like three dollars, and that's what this is. So uh, oh, there we go. Look, you can plug it into the 
to the TV. That's pretty cool. We've got a little USB power thing there. Users manual. And this is him. Wonderful. That screen's a little bit off. That's a bit disappointing. What sort of battery does it want? Oh, it's got a, um, a lithium ion battery. Cool. Well, we, sh we should charge that up. It's USB micro. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't seem to have any power on it. Oh, no, there it goes. <laughs> Super Mario Brothers! Sure. You can play two player? <laughs> oh, I died. I'm, I suck. <laughs> this is a full color screen and everything. How much fun is this? Cool. Well, I look forward to having a bit of a play with that. That looks quite quite cool. Uh, anyway, uh, that's everything. I'm going to take you over to the farewell cam and we'll wrap up. And that's a wrap. So, uh, yeah, that was a huge mail call because uh, uh, recently I got a whole heap of stuff, particularly at the AliExpress sales. So uh, I'm going to uh, do up the show notes for this video. There will be links to all of the stuff that you saw. Um, and it will probably be a while until we see another mail call like that around here. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks very much for watching. And please remember to hit like and subscribe.